Good day everyone. Welcome to Studio 39 Design Studio. This is Richmond speaking, your resident architect. In this video, we're going to be talking about um, dimensioning and all the dimensioning tools that you might need for a, a project. But before I continue with this tutorial, I would like to encourage you guys to like, comment and subscribe to this channel because I do videos like this every week. Now with that said, let's get into it. Uh, the first dimensioning tool that I want us to sort of like uh, get a hang of is the, uh, the dimensioning of uh, circles or semicircles of curved edges basically. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna click C on my keyboard and then I'm just gonna create a circle and just leave it anywhere on the on the screen right here so this is just a circle and uh, you can get the dimension by pressing m and clicking from the center uh, to the edge of the circle right here so you know and then uh, you would use the radius tool to sort of like uh, dimension obviously there's a specific layer which is not showing right here so i can just click on show layer and it and then it will show up and that will be the dimension of this of the circle but it's from the center to the edge which is a, a, a radius and uh, you can show this in any type of way you can make it align you can make it um, uh, vertical you make it hor horizontal it's really up to you you can also click this node right here and by using the stretch radial dimension you can either have it on the outside if that's what you want to do and then you can just play around with it uh, the center point right here it comes with the dimension tool uh, you can either decide to not show it if that's something uh, you prefer doing so it's really up to you you can always control T uh, to open up the settings dialog or click the icon right there and then you can manipulate all this information as you see fit I'm not really going to go into this I'll just leave it to you guys so that you can work on it on your own so another way that you can dimension a circle, which is pretty much a, a useless way in my a, a, in my perspective, uh, is by using the the dimensioning tool and then going to the arc length. Uh, sometimes you'd need this information, but sometimes it's unnecessary. Okay, just to show you guys, you click the circle that you want or the semicircle that you want to dimension. And then you right click and say OK, and then you can either, either either have the dimension on the inside or the outside, and that's what you would get. Obviously, this is a useless dimension, but sometimes you might need it if you just wanna calculate maybe uh, area information or linear information for takeoffs uh, in the quantity survey side of of things. So I think that's uh, that's it with the. Uh, dimensioning circles now let's talk about dimensioning angles so by dimensioning angles we'll use the angle dimension tool I've already drawn a line right here which is sort of like a horizontal line and um, what you can do if you want to find an angle say I want to find out what is the angle of the specific roof right here I click on this angle dimension and then I'll click I'll click on top of this line and then it's it will um, identify the endpoints for both of them and also I can click on this or on one of these edges this is an actually an edge of a fill it's a fill tool so it understands that I clicked from that point uh, to that point and then um, the, the third click would be where I want to place my actual dimension and then as you can see right here the angle of this roof is 28 degrees Another thing you can do is uh, you can either dimension the obtuse, the acute angles as you can see right here or you can also dimension the obtuse angle. I think that's what you call it, an obtuse angle. So that's just another trick and you can, you can always uh, come in here and uh, fi figure out how you want to, to place it. And uh, you can always come in here also, uh, open the settings dialog or just uh, click Control T. Or command T if you're on a MacBook, 
um, and then uh, you can manipulate all this information however you want so just to show you again for the last time you can uh, select uh, this edge and also select that edge and then just place your 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 angle your angle dimension uh, at that point right there so that's something worth noting with that said guys i think we're done with the angle dimensions now let's just uh, i want to show you guys something that i do uh, when it comes to elevations and sections if i want to dimension like levels of a diamond or of a of an elevation or level level points what i use is i use the actual dimension tool and instead of using either the linear method or the uh, cumulative method uh, which i use sometimes when I'm, I'm 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 doing construction drawings for the constructors on site because it's a much better uh dimension tool for for setting out or you can also use the uh, the baseline um but on this method you use the elevation and bracket first and uh, uh, i'm not going to change anything right now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to show you so i can click this line right here and i can also click that line i can click that line i can click also right here and i can just say okay uh, so i right click to say to to select okay and then i mean i just place my dimension obviously it doesn't look as desirable as i would want it so i'll just select uh, this this thing right here and then control c so i'll select a marker and it selects all the markers in this uh, dimension right here and what i usually do is i want the marker to be a solid marker and i actually want the marker to be say two millimeters so that it, it does not become too big and then maybe the text i can also make two millimeters and then i can just say okay and it looks a bit better and uh while this is selected you can while this is selected Control shift d to drag a copy i'm dragging a copy all to the other side so on this side maybe i'll just show the actual dimensions and then on this side maybe i'll just include text so this is another trick whereby you can manipulate all the text um in uh, in with all dimensions basically i can come here and then i can manipulate this if i want i can go to content uh, under content i go to uh custom text and then i can manipulate it from here but uh, i don't want to do that right here what i want to do is this would be the the ceiling level and then this one would be the window and door level Obviously, I don't have to. And this would be the finished floor level. Finished floor level. Obviously, the text is a bit much. Um, what you can do, if I want to represent this as a the foundation base, um, I can ask FB. That's a foundation base. That's not actually Facebook. It's actually foundation base. And um, instead of finished floor level typed out, I can say FFL. Um, people on site usually know. Even council, when I do council submissions, they usually know what I mean. And also this can be WDL, so window and door level. And then uh, I can have this as CL for ceiling level. So uh, basically for, for levels, you can also just take this um, text and move it wherever you feel you are comfortable with and um, if you like also you can always go revert back to the measured value if that's something you want to do but uh, obviously i want to show this information on the side and then i want to show the actual dimension levels it's using the ground flow level to, uh, to check so we, we can also call this finish floor level at the datum point so we know that the footings is uh, negative one one five zero millimeters below the datum point and then uh, the other direction if you're going up basically will be uh, plus certain numbers so uh, that's that with levels uh, now let's just go ahead and dimension a floor plan so that you uh, let's come here and dimension the floor plan so 
the way that I usually dimension is, you know, I'll click a wall. So while having this selected, obviously uh, here uh, I'm showing that I'm using the elevation method, but I want to use the linear method and I don't want to use the geometric method, uh, the arc length. I want to use the, the, also I wouldn't want to use the X, X and Y only. Right now it's selected to X and Y only. Uh, what you'd want to do is you click the arrow and then you say any direction basically and then I'll click on this on the on the wall that I want to dimension and also this wall and uh, also that wall and then I'll just right click anywhere and then say okay and then it brings this into view and then I can place my dimension wherever I feel comfortable with another thing you can do is uh, you can always sort of like move this around you can just drag it around so i'm just clicking on it and then i'm clicking it on it once again and then uh, i can drag it to wherever i want you can also drag a copy of this so Control shift d uh, and then i can say uh, 500 millimeters away uh, and then i can delete these uh, some of these nodes right here so uh, with noting with the dimension line you don't have to have it selected you can just click the intersection and then you can delete that node if you don't want to show that so that's something worth noting when it comes to dimension so this is like an overall dimension basically so this is like uh, core dimension information and another thing worth noting when it comes to dimension is that um, usually it comes in as a, a, as a dynamic height so it usually comes in like this um, so I want to I just want to show you guys this so that you know how to manipulate it so you can always while you have it selected maybe you want a dimension from the edge of this wall to the edge of that wall so while you have this dimension selected you hold down control and then you click that edge right here if you want to also add the dimension of this wall you can while this dimension is selected you hold down control and you click this wall right here uh, so in order to remove this uh, linear line right here you can i'm gonna hold down shift to select another another one Control t to open the settings dialog and then instead of using the dynamic height i'm going to be using the custom height and then this custom height you can always uh, manipulate it at this point maybe you can make it 500 it's really up to you um yeah so Basically, that's that. Like I said, you can always um, add more points to your dimensions while you have them selected. As you can see right there, uh, it added the distance from that edge to that edge. So that's like the a way that you can use dimensions. Uh, like I like I said. Okay, so there's another method which is a much quicker method which is uh, auto text maybe i'll do an, a separate video just to talk about auto text auto te auto annotate basically or auto dimension so you select so i go to 3d uh set and then i select the wall tool and then i say Control a to select all the, the walls in this view and then i go to documents i go to annotation and i go to auto dimensioning and then i say external dimensioning uh, as you can see here, you have your options here. Uh, you have your overall dimensions, which is number one. Number two, you have your dimensions of external geometry, so the edges of the wall. And then dimension structure is number three, which is going to dimension the thickness of the walls. And then the dim dimension number four, which is dimension openings. I never use this, so I can just remove this because it's unnecessary. Um, and then uh, there's another option here for dimensioning walls by outer face or core. Uh, leave it at outer face because that's the most important one right here. And then distance between one, two, and three dimension points is going to be 500, which is my desir desirable way. And you can either place dimensions on all four sides or on one side. Let's just start with without selecting all four sides. So I can just click here. So okay, click the edge that I want my dimensions to be parallel with and then I can just place those dimensions right there. As you can see the last one, dimensions all the, the, the overall dimensions and then the next one, 
uh, the the core uh, the I mean the edges and then the number three will dimension the thickness of each wall so there's another way to to work around this right now this this dimension I think the text can be a bit smaller maybe we can make this text two millimeters so that uh, it can actually show up properly um, and then I'm going to sort of like take this this information I want to delete this and then I want to go back and select wall so that's a way to use auto text but there's another way to dimension everything all at once basically so while I have this the wall selected I go to documents once again annotations auto dimensioning exterior dimensioning and then all this information is basically saved from my previous uh, dimensioning and then I can say place on, on four uh, dimensions on four sides and then I can just say OK and then I can click which direction because I'm currently using the method of all directions and then I can just click on the outside you see that it will click it will show dimensions all around uh, my, my actual document and uh, basically that's it uh, when it comes to dimensioning um, floor plans so that's it for me Richmond I hope this video was helpful for you guys with that said also I like to also once again encourage you guys to like comment and subscribe to this channel because I do videos like this every week so with that said love you guys God bless you and goodbye I'm